Hey Ash, hey. how's it going, man? Yeah, hey man, I'm uh, I'm doing pretty well. How, are you, how about yourself? Yeah, not too bad. It's a pretty sunny day down here. I live in uh, Barwon Heads in Victoria, so you know can't really complain. How about you? How are you spending your day today? Yeah, man. Um, honestly, I mean, up until up until a couple of days ago, it had been a very stressful few days because I think we'd done. We'd had like three nights sleep, uh, three hours sleep every night, and then waking up in the morning and doing like an eight to nine hour drive. And we felt we felt a little bit dead because obviously once you're doing that every single day, you're a bit like fuck this. But now <laughs> we're kind of chilling. I can imagine because you guys are currently on the road with Neck Deep. Yeah, yeah, we're we're on the road with Neck Deep at the moment. Luckily, we're uh, staying at our tour manager uh, Griffin's place which is in, I think it's like, I think it's like 45 minutes away from the venue. And we're there for two days because we've got two nights at the same show. So mm -hmm. after the show tonight, we can literally just get our bags and go leave it there for the next day. Unreal. It sounds perfect. You finally get a little bit of a break. Oh yeah. And he's got a hot tub as well. So, you know, we're, we're getting, we're getting a nice, nice and chill vibes going on there. Some hot tubs some music, some beers, you know, the good times. So you guys may not actually make it to the second show. You may, you may just stay in the hot tub <laughs> drinking beers. I guess it's to, uh, to be determined, my friend, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the shows that you guys are playing at the moment, it's kind of, you know, in support of Desperate Times, Desperate Pleasures, the newest Boston Manor EP to come out. How's the reception been when you've been, you know, on the road playing those shows to new audiences? It's been pretty crazy. Like, um... We're only playing a couple tracks from the EP at the moment just because we didn't really have a lo lo the longest set in the world. So, like, we really wanted to play as much as possible. But we thought we'd settle with um, Desperate Pleasures and Carbon Mono for this tour. And honestly, like, they're popping off, man. Like, kids seem to, to really receive them quite well and everyone's moving around. And we're having a lot of fun on stage as well, you know. So it's a lot of fun. It, it is really fun as an EP. Um, you know, in general, I mean, the whole kind of metal community has taken a bit of a route towards like new metal industrial. And I was kind of, you know, a bit surprised to see the different side of that. The Boston Manor was doing how, you know, as you guys have previously said, the new sound slightly more influenced by 90s groups like the Cardigans and, you know, the later era of Depeche Mode, which is kind of quite different to what everyone's doing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we've uh, definitely listened to a bunch of that kind of stuff recently, as well as like, I guess like, you know, Radiohead, Nine Inch Nails, um, those kind of vibes. It's it's all, I don't know, I feel like I don't really want to be the one to, to pigeonhole us into a genre because I feel like we can kind of, at this point, we're just kind of putting out whatever we want. If it sounds good, it, it works, you know? Mm -hmm. Not in incredibly fair. And you know, it can often be hard speaking on behalf of the whole band and, and as you said, being the one person to accidentally put you guys into a genre or anything like that. Has that happened before where you've said something in an interview and the rest of the band's <laughs> gone, Ash, what the fuck was no, that? No, no. <laughs> it's, not, it's not actually me. It's, um, I guess it's just like, well, when we, when we actually first started out, of course, we were very much integrated into the, uh, the, the wider spectrum of the pop world and i guess like as our band has progressed we've sort of been writing less and less music in that realm and more in just kind of just like i want to just say like alt rock world like it's a bit of everything it's a nice little mm -hmm. umbrella term for i guess what what we kind of would be um but like we still you know we still get pigeonholed into the the pop punk world as too which is completely fine like i don't really care ultimately like if you if you love pop punk, but then you like us and you want to call us pop punk, that's completely fine. And if you like metalcore and like us and want to call us metalcore, that's also fine. <laughs> well, it's kind of a bit of an interesting one. Um, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, Ash, but I can't actually think of too many English pop punk acts. Most of the ones that come to mind are American. And I suppose, you know, when I think of English, it's more so punk, post-punk and, and some of those genres. So... Yeah, I, I suppose as an English band, did it ever feel weird to get categorized as pop punk? I guess so, because I mean, I guess like the only references people really had at the time for British pop punk 
I guess was was just kind of neck deep, and they're only like a few years older than us, really. Like a, it's like a band career sort of timeline goes. So mm-hmm. I guess people just were like, well, these dudes are touring with Real Friends and Knuckle Puck and all those things, and so do Neck Deep. So I guess these are also pop punk. I guess that that might have been the the progression from from that. But either way, man, like I said, I'm completely cool with that. No, it's it's cool that you're so open to it, and because you know I've come across some musicians that are really nitpicky, or you know, if you say a genre, they might get quite defensive because you know that's not the sound they were going for or anything like that. But you know, I suppose Boston Manor and Desperate Times, Desperate Pleasure, kind of highlights in a big sense. You're not exactly going for any particular sound, as you said, Ash. It is a really fun EP and quite evident that you guys are kind of trialing different things thank you man yeah that's that's honestly sort of what it felt like because i think as well like doing an ep it definitely takes a lot of pressure off um like when you when you like record an album you want it all to be like completely and utterly cohesive you want it in a whole entire world of its own and stuff and i think in in, in this ep in a lot of ways it really is cohesive but because it was an ep it was like oh, well, we kind of just write whatever we want and then, like, think about that shit later. And that's exactly, I feel like, what we did do. Um, I I personally just, I don't know, I, f- I fucking love the EP. Like, it's weird saying that, but, like, you know, <laughs> I'm still, like, sat at home listening to the EP by myself, just like, yeah, I'm glad that I like it. <laughs> at least we like <laughs> the music, so it doesn't really matter what anyone else thinks. <laughs> no, I think that's honestly the most important thing. And... I feel quite often musicians want to be perceived as humble. So they kind of don't want to admit that they're proud or or happy with the release that they're bringing out. But, you know, you guys have already been on the road playing some of those songs 30 days in a row. I mean, I'm stoked that you're really happy with the EP because it's going to be a pretty massive tour cycle. Yeah, I really really hope it is, especially for an EP. Like, I feel like we're already sort of booking in quite a lot of, of, of really cool opportunities actually off the back of this EP. So maybe something's actually stuck with the kids too, which is which is something I'm really I'm really like really happy about. But I do think like if you're in a band, you know, you wanna you wanna be writing music kind of for yourselves in a sense because if you're not enjoying the music you're you are writing, then does that not take does that not take the, the passion out of it a little bit? Like I feel like it ends up becoming quite sort of sterile, and it's like, well, this is just my job. My job is to just write music for people, not for myself, you know. So I'm glad that we all, as a five, really enjoy our own music as well as, you know, we're really thankful that other people also get to enjoy it too. And it's, I think the coolest thing about it, you know, as I kind of said, with desperate times, desperate pleasure, pleasures. Sorry, it is quite a different output for the group and i think it's really cool that you guys are obviously kind of growing and developing as a group and and you know going these different directions with everyone kind of being on board i think that's really rad yeah it's, it's cool that everybody's still on the same page and stuff like we will definitely like sort of push and pull in certain directions just to see like where where like each song should sit uh, in mm-hmm. the grand scheme of things and but it it all just seems to work out the the best ever because we all write as well. So we're, we don't have one specific songwriter. There's all five of us will just churn out songs that we love and we're just like, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And then whatever Henry gets to like kind of put vocals to are the ones that we move forwards with. And, you know, it's a really, really nice, like diplomatic process. You know, it's, it's quite cool. It, it sounds it um yeah diplomatic is honestly the perfect word to label that with that sounds kind of <laughs> honestly, like, I, like a very I said diplomatic I yeah. said it and I was like is this the right word I don't know if it's the right word I think it might be the right word <laughs> I reckon it's the right word that I knew exactly what you meant by saying it <laughs> well that's um, good then <laughs> and in terms of plans and you know some of those exciting opportunities that you kind of mentioned is there anything currently in the works for heading down to Australia? Uh, there certainly is. We are, obviously, we can't say anything about it just yet, but we're trying to just make stuff 
work because we've we've been itching to come back to Australia for the longest time, man. You've no idea. Like Australia was the one of the best like surprises we ever had. Just sort of coming over there and realizing that people actually you know wanted to like watch us play and stuff and because we, we, we just thought like we're on the other side of the world there's no way that anyone in, in australia is going to know who we are but first time we came over there was with the wonder years and we did um like good things festival and mm -hmm. every show was just like so surprising like each more surprising than the last one we were just like this is how how do these kids know who we are <laughs> australian kids are onto it man i don't especially english bands i don't know how but there always seems to be that crossover. Like the first time uh, Idols came yeah. out two, three years ago, it sold out immediately. And it was like, how do people even know these guys at this point? Um, yeah, do you think there's something, say, yeah. there's something special, isn't there? Like, I think if you take America out of it, I think the the English and the Australians have got something, something special going on. Because we're like, we're big fans of a lot of Australian music as well. Like, a really big fan of DZ Death Rays, uh, DMAs as well, Trophy Eyes, of course, like all just like huge, huge fans of all that violent Soho. Weirdly over here, no one really knows who they are, but in the UK, we're just like, we need to see violent Soho. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it is really weird. And it's, I feel, I mean, sometimes there's already that void. Um, like I know a massive Australian band, Cold Chisel were kind of the working class heroes that never made it big in America because Bruce Springsteen was already a thing. Um, so, you know, I kind okay. of sometimes wonder if there's a bit of divide there and Australia and England are close enough that we kind of link over. But yeah, I've kind of noticed the same thing. We seem to really embrace English acts and vice versa. We have a lot of Australian bands kind of export to England and, and do quite well. Yeah, man. I think it's great. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what it is about it, but yeah, we just seem to understand each other, you know. <laughs> well, hopefully something, I mean, hopefully the public will be able to know what's in the works sometime soon. I know there's going to be a lot of excitement when you guys do finally get to come down and play all the tracks off Desperate Times, Desperate Pleasures. Um, but thank you so much for having a chat today, Ash. It's been really rad. If anyone's tuned in late, I've been with Ash from Boston Manor. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, Alex. Appreciate it.